Okay, so now I'm back. And we continue to looking at the long E sound, E. So I'm gonna open up the screen. share and there we go and these are words once again you see the same phonetic letter the i or what looks like the i but this time instead of seeing the e e we see the e a now this e a is pronounced like all the EAs you're going to see, they are pronounced like the E E E. Now, you have to be careful. I can't think of an example where the E E is not is not pronounced like the E. I can't think of an example. But I can think of many an example of where the E A is not pronounced like E. Sometimes it's pronounced like A, as in the word steak, S T E A K. Sometimes it's pronounced like uh, the short E, as in bread, B R E A D. Sometimes it's pronounced like, well, I guess it's not really pronounced. It's silent, such as beautiful, B-E-A-U-T-I-F-U-L. So um, you have to be careful of how you pronounce the uh, E-A. It's not consistently pronounced the same way. The E E, yes, but not the E E A. So let's look at it. But here, all the words are going to be pronounced with the long E sound. You see the phonetic symbol I. And um, let's start. A beam. I breathe. Asia. Oh, but that's not the E E. Oh, yes, it is. What am I doing? That's a uh, uh, suffix. It's uh, you, it's when you put this suffix on the end of a word. I have a lot of um, cards on suffixes, prefixes, roots because that's an extremely important part, not so much of pronunciation, but of vocabulary. How do you construct words in English? And these are the kind of words that are not the most common. No, these are not, when you put prefixes and suffixes on roots, you're not talking about the most common words. Th those words you learn as a child, those words you learn as living within the society. Uh, when you're talking about prefixed suffixes, now there's some that are very common, like U-N-R-E, I-N-G. Now those are put on uh, any word in the, society, in the um, language. But when you're talking about um, words and you're talking about, I mean, when you're talking about uh, affixes and an affix is either a prefix, it's either a suffix or it's a, or it's a root. Now you're talking about college level words, higher level words within the language, words that come from either Greek or Latin or from Latin indirectly through French, maybe some Italian, some, some Spanish. These are the words you're expected to know once you reach a certain level of education. Okay. Appeal. Appear. That's a, that's a relatively important verb. 
to appear. And it has several meanings. Someone can appear in front of you. Someone becomes visible that you didn't know was there or that person came there and they made themselves visible or you can appear to be lying. You can seem to be lying. A piece, <clears throat> this is a word you don't see that much in English at the lower levels. But once, as you get to the higher levels, you will to appease. It means to try to please someone. Like there's an expression, and this is from the, um, from what happened in England or the United Kingdom during World War II, when I think the prime minister Chamberlain was trying to appease Hitler, was trying to negotiate with Hitler in order to not go to war. And I think it was Churchill who says you can't appease a dictator. Hmm. Maybe in the United Kingdom, these men were not dictators, but I wonder how the people in the, on all the different colonies they had, did they see them as democratic leaders or people who outside their own country had a different behavior? And as they were fighting for their freedom from Germany in less than 20 years, a lot of the colonies would become ex-colonies, but only through struggle and blood and sweat. Because the British didn't say, oh, after we fought Hitler, we learned our lesson. So therefore all our colonies, places that we control and whose resources we take, you're all free. No, you had to fight, they had to fight. So it's interesting, they are talking about Hitler and you couldn't appease a dictator. Well, interesting. Ares. B. Now this is another B. You have, we've already seen one B, B E E. This is B, it's short for Beatrice. And, uh, a lot of times people don't say Beatrice, Beatrice. They'll just say B, but it's not spelled B-E-E -E because that's a B. That's a Z, you know, make honey. And they don't say B-E, which is the verb, which is one of the most important, if not the most important verb in the English language. Beach, remember we saw a beech tree? Well, we saw the word beach, and then I added the word tree on it, and it's B-E-E-C-H. Well, this is a different kind of beach. This is, this is not a tree. It's a place where you go, and it's beside an ocean, right? The Atlantic Ocean or Pacific Ocean, or a sea, and people go there, and, and it has sand on it, beach. Now, it's interesting for whatever reason, I don't quite understand. People who speak Spanish, not people who speak French or, or um, Portuguese, but people who speak Spanish pronounce this E-A incorrectly. They pronounce it not like the long E, beach. They pronounce it like the short I. And when you pronounce it like the short I, it is a curse word. It is what people sometimes call females or other males when they want to insult them. So when I'm teaching a Spanish speaking student, I pay a special, I'd pay special attention to the long E sound, that they make sure that they do not pronounce the, the long E sound like the short I. Because in two instances, one is beach, 
If you pronounce that E-A like a short I, it becomes a vulgar word. Uh, people use it. And much younger people call each other that. I don't. I, and I don't appreciate someone saying to me, hey, mm, what's up? What's up? And the hey, I don't mind. And I wouldn't mind, hey, sister, what's up? But I don't appreciate if you use the other word. But that's because I'm not of that generation. There's another word that if you confuse the long E sound, you will pronounce it as a as a vulgar word. So the word is sheet, S-H-E-E-T, the thing that you put on your bed, sheet. Some people, ah, and I think it's because of the language. They pronounce the E-E -E in sheet like the short I. Once again, it becomes a vulgar word. So you must make sure that your students are clear on the difference between the short I and the long E. Sometimes it can be confusing. It can be very confusing. Pronunciation is what a people make it out to be. Right? The Americans and the Brits don't always pronounce their words the same. The Brits, the Americans say schedule, they pronounce the CH like the CH, schedule, and the Brits pronounce it schedule, schedule. They pronounce the CH with this other pronunciation, the harder pronunciation. They're both correct. They're both correct. Let's go. Beacon. Bead. Beagle. Beak. Beam, bean, beano. Yes, that's a British expression. Never use it, never. That's why I put British English. And because when I'm look, doing the research for a lot of these cards, I not only look at the Webster dictionary, which is the dictionary with the American pronunciation, I also look at the Oxford Dictionary. And frankly, I would tell my students, if you had the, 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 the means and you're going to buy or you're going to uh, order online a dictionary and you have to decide between the Webster and the Oxford, I always tell my students to get the Oxford. And they say, why, you, you prefer the British pronunciation? And I say, no, you don't, you don't see me trying to sound British. But one of the reasons I like the Oxford, number one is it's, it's very complete. It gives you like the etymology or the history of the language, but also it tells you about the different pronunciations and spellings. So it will tell you, for example, that color it's spelled C L C. Let me get this right now. C O L O U R. That's the British pronunciation, right? Where the Amer which is closer to the French way of writing. They don't pronounce it like the French. They pronounce it like English. Uh, but the Amer the um, American pronunciation, the American spelling is C O L O R. We drop to you, and there's a reason for that. Now I could tell my students there's a reason for that, and that happened during the War of Independence when the Americans were trying their best to separate themselves from the British. So a lot of words they began to spell differently. You know, words that were too that were very French, they call it Frenchified, even though the French did help them during the War of Independence. Okay, I love the history of, of language. It explains so much. Okay. Beard, let's go. And by the way, I think I'm gonna go back to the EE, -E, not so much for the pronunciation, but for 
more words. Um, these words that I have here, I try to do them by alphabetical order. And I try to go from A to Z. A to Z, words that follow the rules of pronunciation. And what I did for the first EE -E were only, I don't know, I think it was like 30 something cards, but I had many more that went all the way down the alphabet. So eventually I might go back, but not so much for the pronunciation, because you know the pronunciation, E, but for learning vocabulary, vocabulary. Okay, let me get that down. Beast, a beast of burden. Do you know what a beast of burden is? Beast of bur burden is, for example, a horse that is used to carry things or a donkey or a mule. Beet. Once again, this is the beet that we're not talking about the vegetable, E-E-T. We're talking about, well, two very distinct things. One, to hit someone hard in order to hurt them, to beat them, and also beat in music. There was, uh, by Dr. Dre, he, he, sold, he sold out to Apple the, uh, what do you call them? The, the, the earphones. And he called those beats, right? Beats. Beatification. The attitude. Beatles, you remember I told you, there's the beetle with the EE, -E, that's a bug. It's rather big sometimes and rather scary looking. And then there's the Beatles, which was a rock group, very famous, very, very famous, very, very famous from, from England. They call, that, they call that the British or the English invasion because right? Americans love the British accent. They think it's so, I don't know what, they think it's a sign of int that the person is very intellectual, which is not, it's not, right? Or they think it's, um, for some women, it's very sexy, okay? I'm not gonna argue with that part, okay? But I like the American accent too. I, accents are accents. I guess you like some more than others. Beatnik, oh, this is something in the 50s. They were before the hippies. Huh? Beatrice, I don't know what happened there. I think I clicked it incorrectly. Beaver, bleach. I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna skip a couple. And then, so I can get more different um, alphabet in. But I think I have a lot of Bs. Yeah, breach, breathing. And you see that ing, that's a, that's a suffix. That changes the, not necessarily the meaning of the word. It can change its function. And it's also, if you're talking about this word being a verb, it can make it into the progressive form rather than the simple form. Okay, cease, cease and desist, which means that's a legal term, which means to stop. Okay. Like I said, I'm gonna skip a couple. Clean, huh, I think that's explanatory. Yeah. He's a clean person, good. Cleanse, and cleanse. Cleat, cleave, that's an old word, to cleave to someone, to like to hug them either metaphorically, either literally or metaphorically, to cleave to someone. Cream. The cream of the crop, that means the best. See? See? Crease. Decrease the, your pants. So it's like you have a line going down the middle. Okay, I want to give you the words that people actually use. Cretan, that's creation or create. Okay. It comes from the Latin, it comes from the, well, the Latin, but I know the Spanish crear, right? Which means to create, to produce, to make. 
creative, someone who is a creative is someone who is able to produce, to make art and creature, I think. And one more, oh, a beam, okay. So that have more words, a lot more words. And maybe later on, I will uh, show those words. Once again, not so much for pronunciation, if for, I mean, not so, yeah, not so much for pronunciation, but much more for just learning some words in English to build up your vocabulary, to build up your vocabulary. So once again, this is Coralific and McLean at um, welcome.com, W-Y-L-C-O-M-E. I hope to see you uh, soon. Also, um, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel once again, so that I may continue doing this, doing videos, giving away products, and not having to worry about the financial side of it. Because the more people I get, the better um, it is, um, the better position I am in making money through my creations. Creations, C-R-E-A, you remember the E-A sound. So I wanna thank you very much. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And I wanna say thank you, bye-bye.